I got an example here of a game of too much friction in a fly zone, okay? Where there's too much stuff happening early on, okay? In, in the down here. So for instance, notice the football. These guys are like 35 to 40 yards away from the football being caught. Let's look at this guy right here, for example, okay? So he's got way too much contact. He's engaging the blocker, okay? Right here, looking at this guy right here, 15. He's engaging the blocker. That's not what we're looking for. This is actually a better job. 24 is avoiding. You can run around blocks, either going speed or backdoor, okay? But we don't want to engage blocks 40 yards from the football. It slows you down, creates too much time and space for the returner, okay? So what technique do we use, okay, when we tell these guys? We don't simply always just want to run around them, okay? Sometimes we want to create contact on our own terms, okay? And what we use is the dip and drive technique. For instance here, here's a pass rusher using it, okay? This goes back to the football 101 that I mention a lot of the time when I'm talking to the players or just different coaches about concepts. This carries over to football. He's reducing his shoulder surface, okay, by the dip and drive technique, okay? Boring his shoulder, putting his near foot in the desired direction, okay? It's a pretty good look at the dip and drive right there, okay? So how do we drill this? You got to get them used to being able to dip those shoulders, dip those shoulders, Okay, so we're gonna simply, this is a drawing of it and I'll show you the video in a sec, but we're gonna have them coming across the field with a PVC pipe behind their back so they can just get used to what it feels like, okay, to separate their upper body from their lower body, okay? So here's a look at it right here. We've got cones set up. They're just dipping their shoulder, dipping their shoulder on those cones, okay? You got the whole team going. They're all using PVC pipes. If you don't have PVC pipes, just have them do it. Okay, with their normal running pattern, dip those shoulders, dip those shoulders, okay? You don't do that very long. It's about a three minute exercise. They get a ton of reps, okay? Then we're gonna do a three angle dip and drive, okay? We're gonna do it straight, we're gonna do it at an angle, and then we're gonna do a hard U-turn, okay, bend. Okay, so here for example, let me go back to the diagram right here. We're coming off the sideline. We've got eight different lines coming off the sideline. We've got bags being held right there and cones. But the biggest thing is getting them comfortable to how to reduce their shoulder surface, okay, and dip and drive at the same time. Okay, so we're going to first work it where it's just simply straight. They're not bending. They're not U-turning. They're just reducing their surface, okay. You've got the players holding the bags for them. It's a pretty good job, and they're just working straight with it. Go to the right side, then go to the left side, reduce surface. Okay, so now we're going to work a bend. So we're going to reduce surface. We're still dipping our right shoulder here. We got all eight lines going at the same time, and they're going to bend to their right, just getting them used to what it feels like to make that angle. Now we're going to bend to the left, reduce their left shoulder surface, okay, while bending to the left right there. All right, now we're going to work the most drastic bend, which is what we call the U-turn, okay, what we call the U-turn. So we're going to go U-turn right. Now notice how slow we're doing this. When we teach this initially, it's at a, almost just a little bit in between a walk and a jog because it's a very drastic movement. We're trying to make sure that they understand, okay, the angles of the body, where the force needs to be off the foot, okay, and how to really bore their shoulder and reduce shoulder surface back into the blocker right there. Creating contact on your own term. You're not running around the block. You are still initiating contact, but it's on your terms, okay? Then we'll do the U-turn to the left. We'll pick up speed a little bit, okay? This is just getting their body aware of what it's gonna feel like, okay? So here's a dip and drive clip in a, in a football game, okay? So we're looking at this player right here, the fifth, fifth uh, spot on the kickoff team right there, okay? Running down the field, he's all about the fly zone right now. The only thing that matters to him is speed, okay? He's got a blocker engaged on him. The football's into the end zone, okay? So he's got about 35 yards to work with. He's definitely still in the fly zone. Avoid blocks using the dip and drive. Look him reduce his left shoulder right there. Excellent job reducing his left shoulder right there. Boom, getting vertical, making the play. It's a really good look at it. Okay, so back to the, uh, your options you have. You got two options. We talk about speed and backdoor. So. When you're gonna work this, this, uh, this in the uh, fly zone, okay, you can either go speed or you can go back door, and a lot of that's gonna be determined off the blocker. He's gonna give you the clue on if you feel like he's overset or not, or if he's done a great job staying square, okay?
okay? If we go speed, looking at this drawing here on the left, you're gonna go away from the blocker's leverage, okay? So for instance, as he's dropping, we got the return going this direction, okay? He does a really good job staying square. You go speed, you're gonna dip your left shoulder and then you gotta do a hard bend to the left, okay? And you turn that thing. Let's say in this look right here, you're going down, the blocker turns and oversets you, so now you can really go up and under on him and use a backdoor technique, okay? Head nod to the right, backdoor to the left, so you would be reducing your right shoulder surface there as you're working back to the left to make the play, okay? So that's really the preferred move. We love using that backdoor move right there, okay? Speed's fine too in certain circumstances. Okay, so let's go back to speed. Got a drawing of, or a picture of it here, attacking away from the blocker's leverage, okay? Definitely always have to bend. Some people will say speed and stack, okay? Earlier you are in the fly zone, you stack. Later you are in the fly zone, you have to bend, okay? Gotta have time and space to go speed. The worst thing you can do is use a speed technique late in the fly zone, okay, where basically you're running around the block and you can never ever use it in the strike zone Okay, when there's when there's not enough room. If you're within that 15 yard mark, you can't go speed. It's normally not ever gonna work out for you. Okay, so here's how we're gonna drill this. Okay, same thing. We got eight lines coming off the sideline, full speed to the blocker, okay? Dip and drive technique, okay? Already talked about that, reducing shoulder, sh shoulder surface, and we're gonna bend to the finish on the returner, okay? So there's a drawing of it. Here's us repping it in practice. Okay, so we are working, avoiding to the left, and this is just what we call speed and stack. So we're saying that we're way early in the fly zone, speed and stack, reduce shoulder surface. Most of the players, especially the receivers, are going to be extremely natural. This is very similar to them running routes. Reduce their shoulder surface. Okay, now we're going to bend. So now we're going speed and bend to the right speed and bend to the right, okay? Now, we're gonna go speed and bend to the left, okay? We, we obviously went sp speed and stack, and now we're going bend to the left here, okay? Bend to the left. Pretty good look at it, right there, okay? Good job, speed, speed, speed. So here's a couple game clips, okay, of good examples of speed. I wanna look at the guy here in the three lane, okay? Choosing to go speed technique, Full speed, this guy's blocking him, okay? He's gonna win with speed. Now, what does he have to do at this point? He's gotta bend. He knows where the return is going. Speed and bend right there. Excellent job. If he would've went back door, he would've nodded him here and crossed his face this way, okay? But he stays speed, bend, make the play. Excellent job, okay? Here's another look at it, looking at this man right here in the L5 spot as we look at it. Working down, okay, this blocker's got him. He's gonna go speed, he's gonna reduce his left shoulder and he's gonna work a bend technique to his left right there and make the play. Excellent job right there. All right, so let's talk about the second option that we have, okay, and that is called the backdoor technique, okay? We always, we always love this because we say backdoors kills returns, okay? If you can backdoor a block and you can get in that man's backside hip, it's the shortest distance, here we're nodding it, we're gonna get him to overset and we're gonna rip our right arm, okay? And we're gonna come back to his backside hip using the backdoor technique, okay? When is it used? Here's an uh, example in a game when it should be used, okay? All right, so first thing is right here, there's way too much time and space here, way too much, way too much friction in the fly zone. They should not be engaging blockers 25 yards, 30 yards from the football, okay? They need to be using a backdoor technique right here, taking that left arm and ripping it through. Take that left arm and rip it through. Okay, same thing here. I'd like to see this guy take his left arm and rip it through and try to backdoor that block, especially as much as he gets overset right there, 